Hey, 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 hey. David Wayne here. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. Uh, today I prepared a little video on the five cards to craft for every faction you quit. Um, it's a question I've come across a lot. Um, I think this video will be helpful for beginners, um, also those that are trying to experiment with playing different factions. Um, it's a question we've come across a lot, like what cards should I craft for each faction? Um, what cards are staples? Uh, what cards will give me the best, you know, bang for my buck? Like cards that that I can craft and be able to utilize them like over and over again. Um, so when you're first starting out in Quint, it's very hard to come across, uh, I would say, scraps. So scraps are pretty hard to come by early on because you're starting out with a limited, you know, starter deck that's not as strong. Um, as a deck that you would be able to, you know, build later on in the game. Um, so with the resources that you do have, you want to make sure that you're using them efficiently and you're crafting cards that you're going to be able to play, um, you know, even further into the game. So uh, in this video, I hope, you know, I can show you from my perspective, like what are the best five cards to craft for each faction. And uh, hopefully you know, it will help you progress your um, journey a bit quicker and more efficiently. Uh, with that said, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, your subscription is important to me and it would be really appreciated. So if you're ready, let's begin. As I've done in my other Gwent educational content videos, uh, we're going to follow a presentation format today. Um, so I'll be showing you a set of slides. And basically, we'll be walking through each of the factions one by one. And I've tried to list these factions in the order that I've played them in, in uh, my Gwent journey. You don't have to follow it, you know, the way, exactly the way that's presented here. If you're more interested in a particular faction, um, Feel free to just, you know, jump forward in the video um, or backwards as necessary. Uh, but, you know, hopefully this video can also be used as a reference later on if you're deciding to, you know, want to be able to experiment with different factions. So hopefully the layout that I presented here is uh, makes it simple to do that. So we'll be covering monsters first, then Nilfgaard. Skoyato, Skellige, Northern Realms, Syndicate, Neutral, uh, and then I did another slide on stratagems because I think they're also important as well. Uh, so let's continue here. Starting off with monsters, we have the Hunt scenario. This is a very powerful artifact. It's used in many monster decks, uh, particularly as a bleeding tool in the second realm, as well as a short third round potential finisher. And it synergizes with the Death Wish archetype. You'll come across this card in Vi decks, in overwhelming Hunger decks, uh, sometimes also in Kelly decks as well. Then we have here the Cave Troll. And this is the faction specific defender for monsters. This card will be mainly utilized to protect any of your valuable engine units, uh, as well as protecting your hunt scenario from getting heat waved as well. So if you have any um, valuable engines to protect, Cave Troll will do the job. Um, units such as Unseen Elder, Oriana, uh, Detlaf, uh, even Keltulus, right? So this card is actually used I would say as uh, pretty often in, in monster decks as well. Then we move on to Parasite. So in monsters, uh, we don't really have that many control options, uh, but they do have this uh, Parasite card that 
can damage an enemy unit by six or boost an ally by uh, six. So this is actually a really good card because a lot of a lot of the um, really good engines have been buffed. I would say like out of removal range, out of the five point removal range. But Monster still has a six power damage card, so you're still able to eliminate a lot of the powerful, you know, base starting six power engine units. For example, like Unseen Odor, um, Damien, uh, stuff like even a boosted Gazras you could take care of pretty easily with the Parasite card. So definitely you want to be able to craft this card as one of your limited control options um, in the faction. All right, so then we have Nag Elfar here. And this is one of the uh, only tutor cards, I would say, in Monsters. It lets you look at two random cards from your deck and then play one and place the other one on top for the next room. Um, so this is a just a good, you know, all around tutor card that the later on you play in the game, the better it is, because um, it's random. So keep that in mind. And then we have here Osriel. Um, so Osriel is a card that mainly is used as a finisher in any type of deck that you're playing. Generally, you use it in either the second round as a bleeding tool or as a the very last card in the third round, in the last say. And you know, as more and more monster cards come out and they become more powerful and they have higher base units. Osrio will continue to get more value um, over time, I would say. So this is a card that we'll continue to see play um, just because it it's just lets you really play the powerful unit essentially twice in terms of actual power. Um, so for 9 provisions, you're going to get a lot of value out of this card um, in this faction. Next up we have Nilfgaard, and the first card that you should craft is the Masquerade Ball. This is a scenario, very powerful, and no matter how much it's been nerfed by the developers, it still continues to see play in a lot of the relevant Nilfgaard decks. Um, it synergizes with playing Aristocrats and being able to remove tall units, I would say. Um, so you can really just slot this in any new card deck and just, uh, as long as you have aristocrats, be able to get the maximum value out of this card. Uh, next up we have Yennefer's Invocation. This is one of Nilf card's uh, tall removal uh, options, as well as uh, being able to synergize with cards like Joaquim, um, and also just be able to remove any unit that you need to answer immediately. Then we have the faction-specific defender, Fion, uh, for Nilfgaard. And this will protect any of your engines or any of the cards that have older abilities, like Damien. Um, this card that's used in a lot of different Nilfgaard decks, uh, Masquerade Ball decks, often use this to protect the scenario. Um, decks like Kogrim often use this card to protect their Kogrim. Um, it's a very versatile card and you definitely get a lot of uh, play out of this card. Then here we have Menno. Um, and this is a tutor card to be able to play any tactic from your deck. Um, it's just a staple tutor, I would say. Uh, Nilf card decks generally always run some kind of tactic, be it Coupe de Grasse uh, in Masquerade Ball decks, um, or in like in Slave decks where you run a bunch of tactics, so be able to choose any tactic is a very uh, versatile option to have. Um, and then lastly we have Dead Men's Tongue. Uh, this is a card that was recently introduced, I believe, in the Price of Power expansion, and this card is just an awesome thinner card, as well as a point slam card at the same time. Um, if you think about the value that this can provide, you're getting at least double digit points 
um, as well as thinning your deck by two just for seven provisions. So I feel like this is a card that's going to be around in Ufgar decks for a long time if they don't um, nerf it, that is. Moving on to Scoyatel, we start off first with the Fall card, and this is a tutor card that will let you play any nature card from your deck. Um, in a lot of Scoyatel decks, we have nature cards such as Nature's Rebuke, which is the 5 point damage removal card, as well as uh, tutor cards that you will uh, also want to craft, as I'll discuss here. Uh, next up, we have Instagram's Council, which is one of these tutor cards uh, for Scoyatel. And at 8 provisions, it lets you look at any dwarf, dryad, or elf uh, from your deck um, randomly, and then play one of those and boost it by 2. So you're getting a lot of value there, and as, being, as well as being able to thin your deck. Uh, next up, we have Gazrez. This was introduced in the Way of the Witcher expansion. Um, it's a card that you can slot into any Scoyota deck that row stacks. Um, such as Elves, um, Symbiosis decks even, uh, any decks that, even movement decks I would say, because you're row stacking generally on the range row there. Um, so when you have four cards left in your deck, you just drop Gezrez, and then if it's not answered by the opponent, it just wins you the round pretty easily. Um, next up we have Feign Def, which is the faction-specific scenario for Scoyatel. And Feign Def is most often used in the Elves deck um, for Scoyatel. It's also used in unitless uh, traps decks with Eldane. And I've personally used it uh, in move my movement decks as well. And it's found a lot of success. So definitely a card that will get you a lot of uh, replay value there. And last but not least, we have Figus, the faction-specific defender for Squirtle. And Figus will protect all your valuable engines like Gazraz from getting removed. It'll protect your Fain Death from getting heat waved. Um, it'll protect, you know, all of your engines in movement. So definitely a valuable card to, to craft as well. Now we get into Skelligan. The very first card you should craft is none other than Blood Eagle. This is the echo card that allows you to tutor a warrior unit from your deck uh, twice. So you play it once and you get it back in the next room. Um, next up we have Vabjorn. This will allow you to get any uh, raid card from your deck and play it. The main one being Blood Eagle, right? So you often use Bob Jordan to find Blood Eagle as another way to find it, as well as synergizing with you know, other raid cards like Raiding Fleet. So it's a good tutor to have there. Uh, next up we have Harrowed, and Harrowed is a good uh, third round card, especially in a long round. Um, if the opponent doesn't answer it, it lets you play a Bronze Warrior from your graveyard, um, and then also damage a random unit whenever you play a Warrior. Um, over a long round that provides a lot of points in warrior decks. And then we have here the Covenant of Steel, which is the faction-specific defender for Skelligan. Um, this defender is not used in warrior decks generally, uh, but it is used in a lot of other Skelligan decks. Uh, for example, Druids often use it to protect their scenario. Um, it's also used in the Arnachad and Sucrus decks. Um, so you'll definitely get some value out of having this deck because it also synergizes with things like priest um, uh, to because it gains one armor whenever um, you hit that berserk six level here. So any self damage skeleton decks can also find use for this card. And then we have Gettyneth, which is the faction specific scenario for Skelligan. Um This is mainly used in druid decks. Um, it's a very powerful tool that you can use to bleed the opponent. It's also used in rain decks as well, um, that run alchemy cards and uh, foamware. Now we arrive at Northern Realms, 
The first card that you should craft for this faction is the Amphibious Assault card. Uh, this card will let you play any Northern Realms unit from your deck with the provision cost of 9 or less, and you can play this twice. A card that will let you play any Warfare card from your deck is John Nautilus, and we'll often use this card with um, Amphibious Assault, just as another way to access that very powerful tutor. Next up we have Donamir of Troy, and this is the faction-specific defender for Northern Realms. Um, in Northern Realms, this card is highly critical because we run a lot of valuable engines that we can't afford to, to lose to um, some damage card, right? So you definitely want to run this card to protect your um, strong engines like Visigata, your Siege Scenario, um, your King Foltest, for example. Um, then we have the Siege Scenario, which is the faction-specific scenario for Northern Realms. And this card is played a lot um, in Siege decks, also in Commando decks I've seen recently. It's, uh, any Northern Realms deck that would like a good uh, Bleeding Tool can also utilize this scenario, as long as you're running um, Siege Engines. And then lastly here we have Margarita, and the reason I included this card is it's not very expensive to craft this card, It's I believe it's an epic actually, um, but it's one of the few cards that give you a control option in Northern Realms, like you're able to answer any um, powerful engine that gets dropped down um, immediately on your turn. So Northern Realms doesn't have many cards that do that. The only one, other one, I think, being uh, on Sace. Um, but even on Sace has a, a limited ability um, in that he can't do anything more than four damage um, if he's dropped in the melee row. So Margarita will actually be able to lock the opponent for you, um, lock the opponent's unit immediately upon deploy. So. Um, you can also choose not to use it right away, but generally you want to be able to, you know, lock that unit as soon as you drop her um, on the board. So it's a good control option to have, and one of the very few limited ones for Northern Realms. We've arrived at our final faction in Syndicate here. The very first card that you should craft in any Syndicate deck is the Palapa Anhart card. And this is just a versatile control option to have um, to be able to seize any powerful engine uh, from your opponent and then use it against them. So as long as you have the coins to do it, you'll be able to seize it. Uh, and then we have next up we have another control option card in Horse and Junior. And Horse and Junior is mainly played in Devotion Syndicate decks. It allows you to remove any um, six power engine. Um, but if it's even higher, like up to 9 power, you can use its uh, fee ability here to just remove it after doing the damage. Um, so it's a card that's been quite a huge staple in Devotion Syndicate decks. Uh, next up we have Vivaldi Bank, and this is the only um, Syndicate Faction Tutor that will allow you to um, Profit 3 and then look at the top card from your deck, plus any additional cards based on how many coins that you have, and being able to play that. Then we have uh, the Passive Flora Scenario. This is the faction-specific scenario for Syndicate. And it's used in a lot of uh, hidden cash decks, um, also in jackpot decks I've seen. It's a good uh, bleeding tool to use in the second round or as a third round uh, Finisher. And then lastly, we have Jacques, uh, Miraculous Child. And this card is a very good finisher used in many Syndicate decks uh, because not only does it provide uh, 12 points of value when you drop it in the third round, it also is a spender. So then you can use up any coins that you have left over to um, boost this one up or um, deal to be able to capitalize on any leftover coins that you have. So I wanted to make a slide for the neutral 
cards. Um, there's not necessarily a neutral faction, but there are cards that belong in this neutral category. Uh, and I feel that's important that we craft these five cards um, to be able to sort of give you more options uh, in terms of deck building, as well as cards that I think you generally should have in order to um, make the most optimal decks, I would say. So starting off, we have one Iromancy, and this is the probably one of the best tutors in the game, if not the best. Um, it allows you to play any card from your deck twice. Um, it comes in at a hefty 13 provisions, but it's really worth it. Um, a lot of a lot of players definitely use this card. Um, so definitely, if you're not playing a Devotion deck, this is a staple card for practically any deck that you're playing, as long as you can fit it in at 13 provisions. Next up, we have Karathi Heatwave. Um, this is also a staple card in a lot of decks, just because people run a lot of um, powerful cards like scenarios that you really only have this card here to answer that. Um, so this card will allow you to banish a unit or an artifact. So generally you want to use this against some artifacts, against any tall units that you wouldn't otherwise have an answer for. Like Heat Wave is a flexible option to have as a removal tool in any like non-devotion deck. And then we have uh, the Notorious Gerald's Erden card here. Um, this will allow you to reset the power of all units in a row. So if you're playing a deck that you know doesn't have a lot of control options, for example, like monster decks, uh, maybe some Northern Realms decks, and you you really want to focus on you know building the value of your own engines up, like to like very high levels, um, and then you don't really want to interact much with your opponent's cards, you could think about slotting in this Gerald Erden card just as a way to like reset the opponent's units at the very end of the match. Um, and if you're running that strategy, it can be pretty effective. Uh, Siri Nova is the next card that I have here to craft. Um, this is a card that gives you some more flexibility in terms of deck building. Um, if you run nine provision cards or less um, in your deck, then you definitely want to take advantage of Siri Nova because it will give you that resilience. Uh, coming in at eight power with the shield and veal, it's really hard to remove. Um, so that's uh, one of the reasons to run this card. It's played, I would say, in Hyperthin decks. Um, you'll see it sometimes in the like, Kogram decks as well. Um, it's a card that I think, you know, as more cards get added to the game, it'll continue to see play. Um, it's just a creative card to build your deck around. And then the final card I have here is uh, Shoop's Day Off. And this is another card that's similar to Siri Nova in that it creates a specific deck building condition that you should uh, follow in order to maximize the value of the card. Um, so if you're building a deck that doesn't have any duplicates, you definitely want to run Shoop's Days Off to get that um, maximum payoff. And there's a card that I didn't put here, but if you're going to craft Shoop's Day Off, you generally also want to craft the Redea card as well, because it has the same deck building condition of uh, having no duplicates in your deck. So I wanted to include a slide on stratagems, although it's not an actual faction in Gwent, but I feel like when you start off in Gwent, stratagems are actually very important um, cards to craft so that you can be able to execute your game plan better, um, especially if you're going first. Uh, cards like Crystal Skull are just invaluable to have. Um, so definitely, you know, focus on, you know, your faction specific cards, but also at the same time that you want to make sure that you have the stratagems that you need in order to, you know, win the first round um, more efficiently. So, Starting off, we have Crystal Skull, and this strategy will boost an ally unit by four and give it Veal. So that Veal is key because it protects you from locks, um, poison, and any other status in the game, really. Um, basically, you want to 
play your you know valuable engine and then boost it with the crystal skull and then that puts your opponent in an awkward situation where they either have to use a high provision cost like heat wave to answer it or just not answer it at all right if they don't answer it then that's where your engine will be able to get its value and uh, hopefully win you the first round. Next up we have the magic lamp stratagem. This one will just transform into a five power lamp unit. Um, it's good against, I would say, monster decks that run predatory dive um, and other seize cards that hopefully will add to the pool of units that you already have. That way um, it's less likely that you'll get like a valuable engine either killed or stolen. Um, also, Magic Lamp is good for going wide because, you know, it's a unit with 5 power as opposed to, you know, playing Tactical Advantage where you're you're having to boost another unit by 5 and often, you know, your unit can get into, like, um, tall range and it gets, just gets removed and the last thing, you know, you want to happen in the first round is, like, a tall unit getting removed if you're going first, right? Um, and then we have here the Caller Stratagem. Um, this one will. This one is actually a faction-specific stratagem, so it can only be used in Nof Guard here. Um, but it's really a good control option to have if you're going first, because it deters the opponent from playing any valuable engines, um, thereby, you know, delaying the actual point value that they would get from the engine, and so you're getting points, you know, passively, like just by having this um, on the board and not using it. Um, next up we have Curse Grow. Um, this is a stratagem that was buffed recently. Um, it now allows you to draw any card of your choice and then put one of the cards in your hand back into your deck. So this card can be used to fetch a valuable card that you want in your opening hand. It's used in a lot of decks um, that require a certain card to be in the opening hand as a strategy. For example, Viper decks, um, I would say Aglace decks, um, where you want, you know, Aglace or like a Skeleton Skags in your opening hand in order to hand buff it. Um, I've also used it in my Hyperthin decks to um, fetch Siri Nova, for example. You can also use it in your Shoot decks to fetch Shoot if you want to play it early on for the resilience. Um, it's a card that also allows you to fix your hand a little bit. So if you have a brick that you want to be able to put back into your deck, it's um, it'll let you do that, basically. Um, and then finally, we have the Tiger's Eye Stratagem. And this one is uh, faction specific for Syndicate. And it was also buffed recently to now gain 5 points. So with 5 coins, you can convert that at the very minimum to five points, but with Syndicate, um, you can often find that you'll be able to turn that five points into many more points um, to get more value out of that. So it's a staple for Syndicate decks as well. And there we have it, the very best five cards to craft for each faction um, in terms of replayability, um, I hope this video was informative um, for those experimenting with different factions or just starting out. Um, hopefully you now have a better understanding of what cards to craft. Uh, for those just opening kegs and not sure of what cards to pick in the Legendary pool or the Epic pool, uh, hopefully this video was also helpful in that regard. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I hope you have a good one.